Alright, so I don't really know much about this thing, but um, it's a Tesla MCU um, logic board. I guess it handles the MCU, Media Control Unit, I think that's what it's called. And so basically what's going on with these old Tesla Model S, I think it's 2012, it's like probably one of the first ones that came out, is that um, you know these things are built on Linux and for some reason, from what I understand, um, if there's an error, it uh, hammers the log files, uh, I guess similar to like an iPhone where um, it just, uh, you know, it just hammers the, the NAND chip until the disk space on the, on the NAND drive uh, fills up and then it just, it kills the system. So basically that same thing is happening on this, on the Tesla Model S 2012 and the only way to fix it is to take this NAND chip off which is which you see the black chip there and um, and then basically just put all the contents of that uh, disk onto another new chip and um, and then reball it and put it back on the on this unit right here so that's what I'm doing here I'm showing you guys how to reball this thing I don't know much about it um, in terms of the Linux side um, there's a pretty big thread on it somewhere. I don't. Uh, you just have to do a search for it. Um, I'll see if I can find it. But uh, basically, there's a big thread on it and on how to do it. I think you can do. Uh, I don't know where I left off. I had a phone call. Anyways, uh, I'm re-recording this thing with sound, with uh, narration. So basically, uh, the guy ended up buying. Another NAND NAND drive here, uh, which is what I'm soldering back on, and he somehow reprogrammed it and added added a few things and something about uh, um, you know logging you know having the log instead of to a file to temp fs so that it uh, automatically so it doesn't like kill the kill the drive when it uh, eats up all the log again. So anyways, what I'm doing here is um, I think this uses what is it that one 153, 198, what is it? BGA chipset. Anyways, I don't, I don't remember exactly what what uh, BGA chipset it is, but uh, it's it's a fairly standard one. Um, and basically, I just reballed it, and um, the the blue thing below is a preheater. Actually, it's a Mechanic uh, IX5 preheater. Get it for about 30 bucks, and um, initially I didn't use it, and he came back, and and uh, it didn't. It didn't work the first time, so he, uh, the guy wanted me to use a preheater this time, uh, and I did so begrudgingly, but um, it seemed to have worked, actually. Um, so maybe uh, there's something to a preheater. I don't know. Or maybe I just screwed up the first time. Um, anyways, the preheater goes up pretty hot. Um, there's no temperature setting on it. It just heats up probably maybe 180 degrees Celsius, maybe. Um, and then my air, my higher stations at uh, well, I'm at 400. What is it? 450 degrees Celsius with airflow of 20 on my quick 861 DW. And so that's the the final, that's the finale right there. And uh, you know I'm gonna obviously I'm gonna clean up the flux a little bit and and uh, try to get as much flux off as possible here. And so, anyways, so that's how you reball this thing. There's there's really not a whole lot to it. This is just fairly standard micro soldering. Um, of course, you know you need a microscope, you need a higher station, um, you need to know how to reball. You need some solder paste. Um, I'm putting some isopropyl alcohol on it right now because um, if you know how to micro solder, the isopropyl alcohol is basically is 99% alcohol, so it, you clean it up and it it just evaporates basically you know and so that's about it so I don't from what I understand this unit if you bring it to Tesla so this unit basically once this flash drive gets hammered your car is basically unusable um, from this one little chip and if you bring it to Tesla they'll charge you two thousand dollars to replace the whole MCU that's from what I understand um, so Taking this chip off, putting it into a programmer to read it, to EMMC reader to read it, and then 
and then you know reflash it and reball put it back on you're probably looking at uh, uh, maybe like two to three hundred dollars for for everything so you're saving a little bit um, I don't think this is a service that I, I want to offer uh, mainly because I can't test it you know after it leaves my hands um, I mean I could do the reball and I can put the chip on but what if it doesn't work you know it's gonna come back and it's probably gonna be a nightmare but um, but maybe I don't know I mean if you want this thing done contact us and we'll see we'll see what we can do you know but uh, anyways I just wanted to put this video out because I thought it was kind of cool the whole story behind it and stuff like that uh, thanks for watching so I just wanted to say thank you for watching this channel and I wanted to promote our online micro soldering course um, we have it hosted at udemy.com and it's at this point it's four hours of video instruction um, the reviews are pretty good um, and we talk about everything from the basics uh, of, of an iPhone logic board um, and then we have a section on ZXW tools um, we have a little section about how to set up your hot air rework station your micro soldering um, station and how to use diode mode uh, the third part is the three most common repairs which is no touch no backlight no charge and the fourth part is all about data recovery so um, if you go through our website it's a hundred bucks and some people say that learning online is not the best way of doing things or you can't learn micro soldering online I beg to differ um, I don't know about you guys but I started watching YouTube videos when I first started about three years ago and that's how I learned it um, and not only that but you know you go to a live course some people like live courses but not everybody has three thousand dollars to spend on a live course right so um, and then yes you're right you can go to YouTube and watch all these videos um, but you're not gonna when people make these videos they don't go from A to Z they usually start from somewhere in the middle because they assume that you watch something earlier on or one of their earlier videos so this course is all-encompassing it has everything from A to Z um, to help you get started in micro soldering and we are adding stuff um, on a weekly maybe monthly basis and we're, we're gonna just gonna keep adding to this thing and um, so if you want to get started just I mean you could also take a class but uh, you know to get your feet wet I think this is the best thing to do right here and I vouch for it um, thanks for watching the video I was also gonna say um, in order to buy it with a discount, $50 discount, just go to microsoldering.com, click on store, and then it's going to be the first item on here. You click on buy at Udemy and that will give you the $50 off. Thanks.